Hello everybody, welcome to part 6 on generating functions and today I want to look at integer partition problems. Uh, in specific, uh, we all know the, the classic uh, example where well, we have a plus b plus c is equal to some integer d and typically we're trying to find non-negative integer solutions a, b, and c right and and we in, in in competition math we have our lovely friend stars and bars uh, to help us where we have two bars uh, one for each plus sign and D stars which I'm not going to draw a bunch of stars so and and we can sort of we create a bijection right to fr from the number of non-negative integer solutions here to the number of orderings of these objects and obviously that's just d plus 2 choose 2 right and so what I want to sh and, and I'm not going to use generating functions to to do this problem because it's a bit overkill right because here I've, I've just solved the problem um, and so, but but what if we? But this is only if if we have right coefficients of one here. What if we have different coefficients? What if we have the equation three a plus b plus c is equal to twenty? And at first, well, at first we we hope to find some sort of bijection like this. Uh, but f since we have this factor of 3 here, there's there's really no nice way to do that. But we notice that finding the number of non-negative integer solutions here is equivalent to finding the coefficient of x to the 20, which uh, if I could write good twos, there we go, uh, of this polynomial the product of 1 plus x cubed plus x to the 6 plus on and on times 1 plus x plus oh man I forgot the <laughs> there's dot dot dots here uh, 1 plus x plus x squared plus on and on and on and then basically that two times um, and and like I said we want the, the coefficient of x of 20 and this is kind of like what I did in the first video on generating functions was we wanted to solve, figure out how many ways we could make things add up to something, and we figured polynomials were the best way to do that. And so we're doing that here. And so we have a multiple of 3 here, right? And we're representing our multiple of, multiples of 3 by x term, or like polynomial terms with, uh, with their power being uh, divisible by 3. So this is x to the 0, and we have x cubed, x to the 6, and so on. And then these lone b and c terms, we are just, um, just we're adding any non-negative integer. And so, how, I mean, we can do this, right? And But we won't necessarily get anything rewarding if we just multiply polynomials, right? Because it's the same thing as sp splitting this into cases on A, right? A The biggest A could be is 6, and the lowest it can be is, is 0. And so we have 7 cases, and then from there it, we can uh, count the number of solutions pretty easily, but we're doing this in generating functions for a reason, and that reason is this solution I came up with while I was working on this problem at a restaurant and I, and I didn't have paper right so I was sort of constrained I couldn't just multiply polynomials like this in my head and so I sort of I started thinking right and in video 2 I described that multiplying by specifically these two polynomials or this polynomial 1 plus x plus x squared plus dot 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 times another generating function 
it generates the partial sums of our of our sequence, right? Of this sequence. So I was sort of thinking of the sequence, right? And and I thought of it in an almost like an array structure of coefficients, right? So this first one represents the coefficient of x to the zero. Then we have x to the first power, x to the second power, and then one, zero, zero. This is uh, x to the to the fourth. This is x to the to the fifth. This is x. Uh, uh, I skipped three. Hmm. This is x cubed. <laughs> this is x to the four. This is x to the fifth, and, and, and so on, right? And so with this polynomial, if we continue on this way, right, so we're sort of splitting it up into residues mod 3. Uh, so this entire column will be 1s. And these two columns will just be 0. So now, what happens when we multiply by 1 plus x plus x squared, on and on and on? Well, we know we'll, we'll have a 1, right? And then our partial sum at this point, at this position, is 1 plus 0, which is 1. Our next partial sum is 1 plus 0 plus 0, which is 1. Then we have another 1. So this will be a 2. And this will be a 2, and this will be a 2. And then we have another 1, so this will be a 3, and this will be a 3, and this will be a 3. And the pattern is very obvious and very true. There's no hidden Fibonacci. <laughs> um, and, and then we we have to apply this partial sum thing one, once more. Okay, one, two, three, four, uh, nope, uh, this is five, seven, nine, I don't know why I can't add today. Um, this is, or I guess count, I can't, I, yeah, I can't add either. Uh, this is 12, this is 15, and this is 18, right? And so we're continuing on in this way. All right, so if we're taking partial sums, right, uh, if, if we're looking at something over here or here, right, it's not very nice because, especially this middle one, right, so we have 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 2 plus 2, or 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 3 plus 3. We don't really have a pattern for that. Um, and so what I wonder, or, or it, it's nicer, right, when, our, when we're looking at this column, right? Because then we have 1 plus 1 plus 1 or 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2, right? We'll always have a multiple of a triangular number. And we can see that in this column, we have 3 times 1, 3 times 3, 3 times 6, right? But what is the coefficient we're after? Where is the coefficient we're after? And the coefficient we're after is 20. And likewise, like I said, we split this up into residues mod 3. So this corresponds to 0, that corresponds to 1, this corresponds to 2. And 20 happens to land in the 2 mod 3 residue. That's the column with that, that we can solve this problem particularly easily for. It'll be 3 times some triangular number. Now let's figure out what that some triangular number is. In particular, if we're looking at this number is equal to n times k minus 1, or I guess I should say for, for this problem right now, 3 times k minus 1, then we notice just by plugging in uh, values of k, if we plug in k equals 1, we get 2. If we plug in k equals 2, we get 5. And we notice that this is the first column, and this is the two column, no, the, the two, the second column. Um, and so we notice in the k column, right, we will have our number. 
And so what we want is for 20 to equal 3k mi minus 1. And so that means that k is equal to 7. So we want the seventh number. Now we also notice our pattern here, 3 uh, are, are triangular numbers, right? I won't th write the 3 times, but we have 1, 1 plus 2, 1 plus 2 plus 3, and th these last numbers are whatever k is, right? Because it's the column number, or, or sorry, the row number, it's on the kth row. And so, and so it's it's obvious that we'll have whatever the row number is as as what we're multiplying. So basically our answer here is three times one plus two plus dot 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 plus seven. And so now imagine and, and you can calculate that, but I'm just gonna generalize the problem. If we have N A Na plus b plus c equals nk minus 1, then um, the number of non-negative integer solutions is n times k times k plus 1 all over 2. Um, and, and we can see that because this is 7 times 8 over 2. So this is uh, the answer to our generalized problem. In the next video, I will solve a bit of a harder problem, but same technique, really, um, where I uh, increase the sum of the coefficients, because then we won't have such a nice pattern. But it ends up being nice. Uh, I, I make it nicer. Anyway, I'll see you in that video. Thank you for watching, and yep.